Hello and welcome to Guns and Gear. You know, I recently got a comment on one of my older videos and uh, when I uh, went to the video to uh, fully read the comment, I happened to notice that the video was almost four years old and uh, I was quite surprised because uh, I hadn't realized that I've been making videos for that long. At any rate, when I first began making uh, videos for YouTube, uh, I got an idea from another YouTuber to talk about some favorite firearms and I thought it was a, uh, you know, a pretty good opportunity that if I made the videos uh, sort of like a little series of different categories it would allow me to uh, talk about more firearms and that's something that I really enjoy to do. And uh, so I, I had every intention on making updates to those uh, favorite uh, firearms videos every year or at least once a year to show more and more uh, firearms and for whatever reason I just didn't do it it's not because that the video series wasn't well received it it is and it's among some of my uh, most viewed videos I just uh, for whatever reason never got around to updating those videos so I thought I would do that today okay now uh, that original video there are a couple of handguns sitting on the table that uh, were in that that original video but um, most of these video uh, these uh, revolvers are not and uh, that does not mean that I don't like those other uh, revolvers or that they're out of my collection for whatever reason they're not uh, every firearm that I've shown on uh, YouTube I still own just haven't gotten around to uh, showing more uh, of my collection so when I decided to make this video, I basically took the revolvers that were in the front of uh, my safes. And that is to say that these are guns that I most likely will choose to take to the range to uh, use for some specific purpose, like maybe a camp gun or um, a hunting gun or maybe a firearm for defense. And that's what these firearms represent, uh, firearms that uh, revolvers that I am more most likely to use. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. This first uh, firearm is a Smith & Wesson end frame and it is in 357 Magnum. Now, as you can see from the barrel, uh, this is a performance center, I don't know if that's showing up, performance center gun. And uh, the model 627, this one I like because it has an eight round cylinder. That's right, eight rounds of uh, 357 Magnum, which makes it a quite a potent package. Now I added uh, these tritium uh, sights for the revolver and uh, the rear is adjustable just like the, the sight that it replaced and uh, all in all this is a great package and it's a you know very good shooting gun and I truly enjoy it. Now let me uh, give you a little quick side note. Uh, as a result of, of these videos that I made of uh, some of my collection uh, I said a lot in those videos that this is a good shooting gun, this is a good shooting gun. Uh, to the point where the folks that were watching my videos at that time happened to kind of rib me a little bit by, you know, saying that I, that I said that a lot. Uh, let me address that. I'm at a point in my life where uh, the guns that I have in my, con my collection are dependable, they're rugged, and they're accurate. And I enjoy shooting them. Uh, if it doesn't meet that criteria, uh, I really don't have a, a use for the firearm and I, I will get rid of it. That's just the way that it is. <clears throat> I pride my collection uh, as being a collection of firearms that I enjoy to shoot. And if you're having problems with your firearm, if your firearm for whatever reason uh, isn't an accurate firearm, and yes I know that um, uh, guns are more accurate than we are, but still, when you do all the things right and you can't get a consistent, get the gun to shoot consistently, it's not uh, enjoyable to shoot. So all these guns are good shooting guns. And that's why I say that so often in my videos, whether I'm talking about shotguns or rifles or whatever the case may be. Uh, if it remains in my collection, that's because it fits that criteria of being dependable and being accurate and guns that I enjoy to shoot. All right. Now the next gun is another one of those guns that's a good shooting gun. Now this is a Ruger Security 6 and just this past weekend I made a video on another Ruger Security 6. 
This is not the same gun. This is the gun that I made the video on, a 4-inch Ruger Security 6, and this is the typical 4-inch uh, gun, a nice, good, thick barrel. But what you'll notice about this firearm is it has a tapered barrel. And that's what kind of drew me to it uh, at a gun show uh, back in the 80s. And then I flipped the gun over and saw the inscription on the frame. Made in the 200th year of American liberty. That's right, this gun was manufactured in 1976 and it had a unique red and black Ruger box. And, uh, that, and I, I just had to have it and I bought it. Uh, this has turned out to be a, a very uh, uh, favorite gun of mine because it's just, uh, it's just a great shooting gun. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't know uh, what else to say. Now these are the original grips and these are not the grips that I normally keep on the gun. But I wanted you to be able to see the inscription, okay? The grips that I normally have on the gun uh, are these, which are also Ruger grips, but they're also much broader, sort of like the Smith & Wesson Coke bottle or Target style of grips. Um, I actually took these grips off of another Ruger Security 6 that I have with a 2 and 3 quarter inch barrel uh, for the purposes of the video. Now the next gun Oh man, what a what an awesome gun! This is a Model 657. This is another uh, Smith and Wesson end frame. It's in 41 Magnum, which is one of my all-time favorite uh, handgun cartridges. I love the 41 Magnum. Made some videos in the past talking about that. Uh, this is a very early model, Model 51. It has the pinned barrel. It has the recessed cylinder as you can see right there. And it has the target hammer and the target uh, trigger. And this is just a, oh wow, what an accurate firearm this is. Uh, this is one of my favorite choices if I'm going to uh, handgun hunt where the handgun is my primary firearm. I love the performance of the 41 Magnum uh, for the game that we have in Virginia. It's, it's very adequate and uh, Man, just love this little, this little handgun. Now, the next gun is another model uh, 57. This is another 41 Magnum, another end frame. But as you can see from the barrel, this is their mountain gun series from Smith & Wesson, which has a dramatically tapered barrel. And as you can see towards the muzzle there, uh, not very much metal around the muzzle. Uh, that was done to uh, lessen the weight of carry. And with a four inch, end frame uh, with a nice set of grips. It's a joy to shoot and it's not that difficult to carry all day. Next firearm, another end frame Smith. <laughs> this is the model 629. Now as you'll notice from the barrel uh, it's etched on there 629 classic and that denotes you know, the full length under lug and sometimes a little, uh, some odd uh, barrel lengths. This is a five inch uh, barrel. Another thing is that that's not the original barrel that I got with this handgun. Uh, when I bought this 629, which is a 44 Magnum, by the way, in stainless steel, uh, it had an eight and three eighths inch barrel. And this happened to be one of those firearms that just didn't shoot well. It didn't group well with the heavier uh, loads that I like to hunt with in 44 Magnum and I was very disappointed. And I was about ready to sell this gun when a, uh, a buddy of mine who is a gunsmith, uh, he had this barrel and we did a swap and he installed this barrel and man I've just, I've never looked back. Uh, this has been just a, a, a very accurate gun uh, and a joy to shoot. I love the underlug of the classic barrels and uh, man I gotta tell you this is one of my favorite 44 Magnums. Now the next firearm, yet another end frame Smith & Wesson. Uh, this is a 625 and it is chambered for the semi-automatic round, the 45 ACP. This is another uh, performance center gun, which hopefully that shows up. And this is a Jerry Michelick uh, edition revolver. Now, you may ask, uh, how does this shoot uh, the, uh, 
the rimless 45 ACP. Well, it does that by moon clips, and we've had that technology since World War I. And man, when you're talking about these great big old charging holes here in the cylinder, and these great big old fat rounds, they just fall right in uh, very easily, making reloads rather quick for a revolver. And uh, just an outstanding gun. The attention that they, they uh, give a performance center gun is outstanding. This gun really shoots well. It's very smooth action. And when I bought it, uh, and the first time I went to the range, did I shoot as good as Jerry Mitchellick? <laughs> Not even close. But it was a joy to shoot that gun then, uh, and it's a joy to shoot this gun today. <sighs> you know, revolvers, I love revolvers, and I have an affection for three-inch barrel revolvers. Uh, because I think in many cases, not only are they attractive to look at, uh, but they are a, a great compromise with portability and sometimes even concealability uh, and performance. And this is a gun that I just think is just absolutely gorgeous and I love to shoot it. This is a, another Model 29. Now this is a 44 Magnum. You'll notice that it also has the full under lug on the three inch barrel an unfluted cylinder. Uh, it also has the target hammer and trigger and uh, it's had quite a bit of work to it. Very smooth as glass uh, action to it. Just an absolute joy to shoot. I enjoy this gun quite a bit. Now you know sometimes you know uh, I'll carry a revolver when I'm small game hunting uh, during big game season, okay? And I'll carry a revolver that will allow me the opportunity to take larger game if the opportunity arises. Uh, that was the line of thought when I bought this handgun. This is, a, this is a revolver I've probably carried in the woods the most for that very purpose. This is a model 657. Uh, it's a stainless steel 41 Magnum. It's another end frame gun. Uh, it's a six shot. Uh, and it is just a great gun. I bought this in 1989, brand spanking new, and uh, man, this has just been one of those guns that I just love to carry, I love to shoot. Now the next firearm uh, represents my entire Taurus handgun collection. <laughs> now that's not to say that I've had uh, a few Tauruses uh, throughout my life I have. Uh, but like I said earlier, uh, I keep guns that are good shooters, that are dependable, and I have just not had good luck with Taurus. I know many people out there love their Taurus revolvers and hand, semi-automatic handguns and whatever the case may be, and I think that's great. Uh, I just haven't had that kind of luck. Now this handgun right here is the Model 441. It's a 44 Special. It's built on a sort of a mid-size frame. It has a five-shot cylinder, which keeps for a fairly narrow profile. It has a three-inch barrel, and this gun shoots very well. I have nothing bad to say about this gun at all. And uh, to be honest with you, I should have two uh, Taurus handguns in my collection. And the other one would have been a Model 85, a 38 uh, snub nose that uh, I just really, really, really liked. I liked the grips on them. Uh, I liked the way the gun shot. Uh, <clears throat> I ended up getting rid of that gun in a trade. And with the, with the uh, intentions on getting another one, I just haven't done that. Um, not trying to bang on Taurus. I just haven't had particularly good luck with them. The next firearm is another 44 Special. Now this is a Smith & Wesson. It's built on an L frame. Okay, a little bit beefier frame than a K, a little bit smaller frame than an N frame. Uh, I think it fits this uh, 44 Special very well. Uh, it's a snub nose, two and a half inch barrel, and it is a, a part of their Night Guard series. This is the Model 396, and it is just a just a neat gun. I like this gun very much. It's very lightweight, and the materials used to make the frame and the barrel, as you can see. There is a steel liner in the barrel to uh, reinforce it. It does have a steel cylinder. Has a tritium uh, front post sight 
and uh, all in all, just a just a handy little gun. Uh, it's a it's a bit of a, a chunk for its size, but not for weight. It's very lightweight, and with the 44 Special, uh, it's a really nice fit. <laughs> you know what? Getting confused here. If I were to uh, have to choose uh, my favorite 357 Magnum, uh, this would be right at the top of the list. This is a model uh, 66 from uh, Smith & Wesson. This is a K-frame 357 Magnum with a three inch barrel. Uh, my affection to three inch barrel revolvers probably uh, began with this revolver. Uh, in that I think that it is such a uh, great collection of attributes to a revolver. It is not that thick of a revolver. It handles uh, 357 Magnum, especially defensive loads, very well. Uh, the K frame is, is a bit smaller than the L frame, uh, so it's not as heavy as like uh, the 686, for instance. And uh, Man, I just, I love everything about this gun. I think it looks good symmetrically. It shoots very well, and uh, I've just always enjoyed it. Now, I said in the beginning of this video that I, I'm picking out guns that I shoot a lot, and I had to narrow uh, the amount of guns that I was going to show in this video. Uh, I have a Model 65, which is a stainless steel fixed sight version uh, K-frame, just like this, uh, this uh, Model 66 is. And I certainly enjoy that gun. And I also enjoy my Model 66 with a two and a half inch barrel. Okay, but if I had to choose between those two guns and my four inch uh, 66, I still had to come back to this one right here. Um, one of my all time favorite revolvers. Now, last but certainly not least, my Colt Detective Special. It's the only Colt I have on the table, which I think is rather um, surprising to me because I love Colt revolvers and I have a few of them. I don't know how many I've shown, but uh, if I was going to talk about a defensive revolver that you could carry, like in a pocket carry, uh, this is my first choice. I don't often pocket carry. Sometimes I do that for a backup gun. Uh, I do not make a practice of pocket carrying for primary. That's my choice. Uh, but I love the Colt Detective Special. It is a very old design. This is a third generation of that design. It is does have a six round cylinder, unlike the J-frame counterparts from Smith & Wesson, which are five shots. And uh, I tell you what, there's this is just a sexy looking gun to me. I like it, I always have. Now that's not to say that I don't dislike my Model 638, which I've shown in many videos. Uh, this is a very lightweight gun, lighter weight than the all-steel uh, Colt Detective Special. But folks, there's no free lunch. Uh, that gun is easier to shoot because it is heavier, uh, heavier and it does absorb the 38 Special recoil a little bit better than this gun right here. But that's not to say that you can't shoot this gun well. Um, but once again, I couldn't put everything on the table. Now, somebody eventually is going to say, uh, so what, you don't like 22s? Uh, yes, I do. I have a couple of 22 revolvers, not very many. And I guess if I had to put one out there uh, for a favorite, it would be this uh, Smith & Wesson uh, 317. It's a very lightweight gun, mostly aluminum construction. Uh, you do see that there is a uh, stainless steel liner for the barrel, but the cylinder is all aluminum. Okay, so this is not a gun that you take a brick of 22s and go out to the country for a, uh, a day of enjoyment, you know, tipping soup cans over. Uh, but I think this is the uh, epitome of the idea of the kit gun that Smith & Wesson introduced uh, many, many, many years ago. It's very lightweight. Uh, it is a minute of squirrel at 20 yards, so it can be a purposeful handgun as well. All right, well that's a look at some revolvers that I truly enjoy. Uh, thank you for watching my video, I certainly appreciate it. And remember to shoot straight. 
on the range and in life. Thanks.